I've got an exciting new build for a wedge. Stay tuned, we're going to talk about the wedge build start to finish. Welcome back to Mid Golf Shop, Jim McCleary, Big Ten's most awarded and certified club maker. And on the Mid Golf Channel, we talk about how to put clubs together, different building and tip techniques, fitting, and what the parameters do for you. And we do some club reviews. So if you would like the video and subscribe and then swing and hit that bell that's at the bottom when you get to the subscribe button. So, Mr. John in West Virginia, all right, we're building for West Virginia. He's come to visit me a couple of times. I did a, a, a PXG reshaft for him. That was interesting. It caused me to have to uh, talk to PXG just to make sure of a few things. And we've done some, uh, we did a fitting for him. We did a couple of bit loft and lies, some bends, that kind of stuff. And now, and the reason why I'm really excited about this is he sends me one of these. Okay. Looks plain Jane, doesn't it? And it's made to be that way. All right. Just a regular wedge. It's a forged, as it says right here, forged 1018. All right. 1018. That's the kind, of, I believe that's the carbon content. Anyway, this is a Don White wedge. All right. A Don White wedge. So let's do a little bit of history. Don White, if there was ever anybody to be deemed a master club maker, it would be this guy. All right, Don White. He is a grinding machine. All right, he did this stuff for McGregor when McGregor was a powerhouse. All right, so he's been doing this for a while. And I met him. All right, around 2012, he was with Scratch Golf, and they did a lot of hand grinding on all the, all the clubs and he got on board with them and I got to talk with him totally totally a gentleman he is uh, probably one of the nicest guys you know that is willing to talk golf clubs that I've ever met okay and I've met a few and he just he just was he was absolutely covered up by people wanting to ask him questions so the scratch golf didn't last very long and now he's with Sugarloaf and Sugarloaf is a company that brings out unique golf items, i.e. Don White wedges. He all, they would do stuff like, um, they'd have stuff like that or they would have other items. And they're basically, they're just one time. They're not, they just get this idea, they make a run and then that's it and then they sell them. And, and Don White, is going to be a little bit longer standing. Now what you do is you contact them, I guess you talk to them and you tell them your your grind requirements and and he makes them. So when we talk about grind requirements, what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about this kind of relief, we're talking about this kind of relief, we're talking about this kind of relief. We're talking about this kind of relief. We can even talk about the actual shape in this particular area, whether you like a high toe or whether you like it a little bit more rounded, all right? Whether or not you want this to be out a little bit more, all right? And you see how all that goes, all right? So there's a lot that really goes into a wedge. Now, it also depends on where you play, right? If you play in thick rough or fluffy sand or your, your fairways are very, very, very tight, or if you don't play with greens that are lofted up off of the fairways, if they just go right in and they go smooth, if you don't have a lot of chipping, or if you do, if you have a lot of, you know, a lot of undulated shots, then, you know, wedges become very, very important, and the way that they're ground is very, very important. All right, so that's the whole, all right, I'm off my soapbox now. Don White, he's awesome, all right? One day, I might actually do like he does. But this thing is just, you know, it, it's simplest, it's sim simple in its look, right? And it says DW right there. Tells you what he's got, which is a 56 degree. And there, 
I just want to stamp something so bad right in there. But simple is cool too. So what are we going to put in it? Well, where he has sent a, a, a Nippon NS Pro Modulus 3. I just so, so hoping you can see this. It's a 115 gram uh, steel shaft and it is made in Japan. Finally, we're going to put in a, and I'm starting to see a little bit more of these, but the Super Stroke. All right, this is the Super Stroke Soft Grip. Now, it's a little firmer than your softer grips, but it's got a pretty good feel. And, I, you know, this is basically Super Stroke's aim right at the other soft grips. Okay, so instead of, so we're only building one club right here, one club. Oh, I forgot to tell you. And with that expense, they send you a custom ferrule. John's a West Virginia guy. Apparently that is West Virginia color, so that's what he's getting. First things first, when you ever get any of these things in your building, you do the idiot check. Will it fit on there? Does it fit on there? And it fit on there smooth. Okay. So sometimes you can get ferrules that are too small and they leave a shelf. And I don't like that. I'd much rather it be sticking out on the ferrule and let me smooth it down. This is just right, so we're in pretty good shape there. Here's what we're going to do. Normally I really speed you up really, really fast, and that's not what we're going to do today. We're going to do, we're going to talk in real time because all I can do, I can't do any frequency matching because it's a taper tip shaft, and I only have one anyway. So we're just going to go through the spine and flow process and the gluing process and the setting it up and then we'll put a grip on it uh, tomorrow and we'll be done. So we can talk about our build all we want. And then while I'm doing this, listen up because I got a few questions for you guys. So we're going to zoom in down here. Okay, so what you see down here is my spine aligner. It's two, bear two ball bearings in between a PVC holder. I've been asked many times the dimensions, okay? Not to, to get too wrapped around the axle. The you know, bearings come in different shapes and sizes, so we don't have to really worry about that too much. Day two of the quick wedge build, and it's Sunday. Normally we're closed, but I want to get this thing finished. So I had to get my brisket started and come back to this. We're going to be putting the grip on, finishing the ferrule, and then we'll talk about the, the bend and then be done with it. And then... I have a little bit more extra to show you, so stay tuned towards the end because we're going to explain a few other things with uh, another wedge. But first, nice vest in the shop, not necessarily what it is, so we've got to change into more workwear. So for mild-mannered shop owner too, to mild-mannered shop guy. <laughs> As I told you before, we had a Don White wedge, and very clean, very classic, and we put on the ferrule that came with it, and just so that you can see, it, is, it actually came out pretty decent. It's not too, uh, not a big edge. However, whenever you put a little glue in, you get that, and that's got to go. So we're going to go to the uh, blue belt. We're going to turn it just a little bit. We're going to knock that. We're going to knock that off and then we're going to make it look pretty and then we're going to cut it. Now we had to cut it to the same length as the gap wedge. Now I just did a PXG gap wedge for a customer from West Virginia and I'll throw a little bit over to the side and as we're talking about it, I'll get over here, as we're talking about it, I'm going to put it over here and PXG, right? Uh, very nice club I, I happen to know a guy over there that we've known each other since he was a very young man. Now he's not a young man anymore. He's a middle-aged man. <laughs> anyway, he's a, he's a good cat. And we talked about the, what I would foresee in the pitfalls because that is not a hollow back. It, that iron is filled with a material, right? Some kind of material, goof, whatever you want to call it. And I was afraid that if I heated it up, that it would come rushing out the hosel. I was told, not a problem. Well, turns out that's exactly what happened. It didn't come rushing out. It just, it, you'll see in, over here. And so I cleaned out the hosel, 
checked the weights, everything was fine. I just had to clean it up a little bit and put it back together. So some of those things just do happen. Now I don't think it's a, personally, I don't think it's from PXG. What I think it's from is somebody put a new shaft in that thing and may have overheated it then and allowed all that to go on. Because when you hit it with some heat and the club just flops open, that's a problem. So that was that. This is this. So let's go put this on the Feral Turner. Feral Turner, right? Feral Turner. All right. The blue belt. We're going to put it on the blue belt and we're going to clean it up and turn this guy into a wedge that John can use. There you go. Turned out pretty good. All right, so let's cut it and grip it. All right, John was at a 39 and a half inch five iron and he wanted the sand wedge the same length as the gap wedge, which nine times out of 10, I make the same length as the pitching wedge. So they're all gonna be 37 inches. So I marked it. So now let's cut it. A lot of noise. All right, so what happens is you get a lot of debris in a lot of cases, so I just send that off on my belt sander. Okay, a real quick trip to the belt sander, and it's nice and clean again, and all the crap is taken off. So now let's grip it. All right, John wanted me to put on the, it's called the Cross Comfort Super Stroke in midsize. It's a neat little black and red grip, kind of softer, uh, more in the firm area. And so what we do is we get ourselves our piece of double-sided tape. Make sure there's no wrinkles in it. Nice flat in the back. Thumb over the weep hole. Fill it about three quarters of the way. Make sure the inside's all nice and lathered up. Let it drain out so it gets all the tape and a little bit beyond. That way, if you don't have enough tape, and you shouldn't be there the entire way, that it'll slide over. Push. Get it initially lined up. There, that, that's a good, that's the pressure. That, that actually helps it slide. Seat it. And then a final adjustment. Looking down, it looks good. And then what I like doing is wiping it off with the solvent. And it dries off pretty good. And what it does, it takes off all the all the remaining oils or whatever might have been on there. So I'm going to recover this, and we're going to clean it up and bend it, and we'll talk the rest away. Okay, Clubmaker's cleaning corner, C cubed, which is very very quick. Um, thing is, I started a new can of wax. And that's a cool thing because normally it takes me oh, a year and a half or so to get through this. And it doesn't take a whole lot, you know, of wax. And in order to get through it, as I just junk the, as I put a whole too much on, but um, it's just a good sign that you guys trust me and I thank you. Thank you so very much. Alrighty, so quick review Nippon Mod Modus 3. 115 gram taper tip shaft went into a Don White wedge and uh, I'm really hoping that John talked to him about it so that he gets the best of Don's expertise and what we're going to do is we're going to put this guy on a on the loft and lie machine and he says he wants it one degree up which in most terms means it's a uh, 64 degree and we'll make sure it's 56 and there we go so if you like what you see there's a super stroke all right and then the modus right there we're doing a lot of Nippon lately there's the modus 115 all right it says the wedge shaft 
wedge shaft made in Japan with the nice bright ferrule for John and his school colors DW for Don White 56 degrees nice just a basic old finish you know, and there's the line see that's a nice flat edge right there well done all right so spine and fluid ready to go and uh, tomorrow it's going to go out and see John so John I hope you're happy for the rest of you if you got any questions just put them down in the show notes and I'll be more than happy to answer them and if you like what you saw like it down below if you would please and subscribe and swing and hit the bell that goes when you hit the subscribe button that way everything downloads to you stay tuned a little bit and we will show you some more pictures just straight away pictures at the very end and uh, so you can see more close up better better resolution that kind of stuff and let's see your scores go low